Hey pilots, Drain Man here and today I have got a very special video. In today's video we're going to be checking out the all new HGLRC Sector X5. That's right. There has been so many sectors, we are talking sector V1, V2, V3, V4, and that's just on the sector 5 line. We've got sector 4, sector 6, sector 20, sector 30, sector 132. Sector line has been around for some time, and it has given HGLRC plenty of experience with building this quadcopter, getting the pilot's feedback, and then knowing what changes to make to make this thing just that freaking awesome. And I have reviews on the V3 and on the V2, and I'll put those down for you down in the video description. This drone is off the hizzy. You are not going to want to miss this. Let's check this thing out, and then we're going to take it to the sky and see how she does. Let's go. All right, pilots. So what has caused them to go from V3, V4, V5, V6 to X5? That's right, because this is an X-style frame, and they have just made so many awesome little changes, little tweaks, little beep, 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 that this thing is super, super cool. Wait till you see this. Let's stop messing around. I'm going to bust this open so you can see. Let's pop the top. All right, before we go any further, I do want to point this out to you. This is the U.S. Repair Center, which is Cyclone FPV. And you can go check that out at CycloneFPV.com. On top, what do we got? Two packs of Ethics S5 for the S5, Sector 5, X5. <laughs> no? I don't know. All right. We got two props. All right, so right away, you're seeing right here on the battery pad, it says... X5. All right, so let's go ahead and remove our packaging foams. We've got our quadcopter, which I'm not going to tease you with just yet. So you've got some stuff, some manuals. Uh, we've got to talk about these. These are not battery straps. You're going to see what those are, and you're going to be like, Whoa. Now, inside of here, we've got our mounting screw and nut. This is going to be for our GoPro. If you're rocking a Hero 8, Hero 9, whatever it may be, this is kind of universal. It allows you to be able to attach any one of the models of GoPros to this quadcopter because it's just too much for them to 3D print an 8 and a 9 and a 10 and a 7 and the guy who's still running the session and all this kind of stuff. So what else we got? So inside, we've also got two battery straps, and these are their, like kind of like leather straps. They're good straps. They're not the super cheapy cheapies. All right, we've got prop nuts and some spare screws. And these screws can be used for all types of things. Mounting motors, extra top plate, bottom plate. You got an arm screw that came off, which usually doesn't happen. But if it did, you'd have a spare. We've got some foam, which keeps it safe. And just a couple other miscellaneous things like your quality check and a alias sticker pack. And let's check out this drone because this is what we're here for. All right, so we are riding on the red and black theme. Wow. These motors here are the 2306 1900 KV alias motors. And if you have not yet tried these, you are missing out because I've got several quadcopters including the Win 5 and I've even got a spare set right here. These are the Alias HDLRCs. These are a beautiful blue, just like these are a very nice red and black. These motors rock. If you have not tried them, they are a fair price, about 22, 23 bucks a pop, and they run nice. So if you have not tried those, make sure you do. All right, so we're rocking some Alias motors. We've got our prop nuts right here. So if we pop those out, let's go ahead and get them on, huh? All right, so what are we rocking? We are rocking this uh, style frame. It is a X frame, and you'll notice they've hooked up the 3D print. Let's get you in a little bit closer. Look at that. It's like a black and red, which matches our theme. But the way that those stick down is it's... <laughs> It like has a landing pad. So the very first thing that like catches your eye is this cage. Look at this camera cage. That is like solid titanium right there. And I mean, that's just beefy protecting the camera. Look at that. 
I mean, nothing's gonna happen to this camera, and that's important because when you nosedive or you hit face first, you don't want your camera to be the first thing that impacts, and they've thought about that, and they've protected that, so when you're hitting, you are not gonna hit your camera because you've got this beautiful five, okay? Now watch this, S, five. And we've even got the Cadex Retel V2 camera. It is a 1.66 millimeter lens. Now, if you're not familiar with lens at all, that is going to get your field of view uh, at least 170, if not greater, to where if you're rocking a, a 2.1 or a 2.5, you're looking at 150, 160 at best. So if you're a field of view guy, this is going to get you that. This is a very nice camera. Now, their 3D printing skills are nice. You may see the S right there, which is for our S5 or our Sector 5 or X5. I mean, it's kind of a mix of all of it in between. It's even, it's, it, this is even the Sector V4, because <laughs> that's what it is. We've got the V3, this is the V4, and it's kind of got a little initials like X5, Five, which I do like. We've got very nice mounting for an Immortal T if that's what you're running. If you've got yourself an RXSR or anything like that that's gonna run two little stubbies that you need to put the antenna into, you've got two mounting straws with caps and these just pop right off. So they're really just for looks at this point unless you plan on mounting with that. You've got your SMA connector right here, so that's very nice if you're running a Axie or if you've got anything like that, maybe a lollipop, whatever you've got going on, SMA right here, you twist it on, you're good to go. It's out of the props, it's not gonna get hit. It's definitely very, very sturdy because look, it's locked on right here with two separate screws. So this guy's set up in beta flight, rocking the new, Betaflight 4.3 and we've got a GPS in and set up so that means I've got Betaflight Rescue on a switch at my fingertips. So a great solution to a very big problem is right here you will see where we've got an XT60 connector built in. So they've ran our cable to the back and then popped up and mounted it so that's nice. We'll put our battery on top and then we'll just plug in through the back Actually, I'll grab a pack and I'll show you. If I was to stick this here, right? So watch, boom, flip this over, battery strap over, and then just like that, ready? Huh? <laughs> Very nice. Wow, those startup tones sound good. Okay, next up, I wanna just stress on this, look at this, our edge buffers actually cover the entire carbon right here. That means any impact, I'm protected. Now, is it gonna save you from breaking an arm? Probably not, but that everyday bangity bang, you're gonna keep from that wear and tear because your entire arm is protected. And hey, it's just a 3D print, so when they wear down or break off, you just get more, put them back on, and keep on a rocket. One thing to touch on this motor is, on the bottom of the alias motors, you may not have known this, so I wanna touch on it. You may see this little plastic right there. Can you hear that? So what that is, that is a little layer of plastic that sits on top of where the motor screws come through, but underneath the winding, so that way when you drive your screws through, God forbid, if you get too close, you won't hit your windings. Now, you'll hit them, but you won't make contact. You will not have continuity running through there, causing all sorts of issues, because if your screws are touching your motor windings, the list of problems goes on and on and on, okay? So that's very nice. Now, under here, we've got mounting of 20 by 20. 30 by 30, we've got the press nuts, and you already know that I absolutely love the gold trim screws. Huh? Yes, very, very nice. Now, we've got 2020 mounting in the back. You've got additional mounting right here if you've got something else, or 20 by 20 here and space here. It just goes on and on. You've got some stuff here if you wanna put a capacitor. You've got a protector right here. Why not? If I accidentally come in a little low and I slide like that, I've got some protection right here, rocking and working in my favor. Earlier when I opened up this video, you may have wondered what these were, and if you haven't caught on by now, that's right, it is a spandex for your quadcopter. No, no, kidding. What this does, if you don't already know, is when you're spinning, or maybe you hit a tree, or you're in the grass, reverse props or not, 
you are going to toss stuff up and throw it inside. And what that does is that makes your electronics all dirty and nasty and covered and stuff and blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what? That ain't gonna happen because you've got this protector right here. And it's not 3D printed and it doesn't, it's not held in by 25 screws and it's not a nightmare to try to get in there. You just simply slide this down, plug in your USB. So I personally am a big fan of that. And with the XT60 coming out the back, there's nothing coming out of this. Like it's literally able to sit flush and just keep a nice, clean, slick look. Huh? Notice the flush screws over where your battery sits. That is not an accident. That is on purpose. When your battery is right here, you don't want the nubs of your button head screws or even the bucket head style stabbing your battery. I mean, enough of a hit or hard enough could cause you to puncture your battery or dent it or damage the cell, whatever it may be. But guess what? With flush screws, ain't gonna happen. All right, that just pops off. Look at that. That is an entire little buddy attachment system that sits on your XT60. Gosh, that's nice. So not only does it have the two screws here, two more here, two more here, two more here, we even have the clips popping right into the top plate to give us even more security, even more strength. All right, let's take a look inside just so you can see. So back in here, I've got a Crossfire Nano TX mounted underneath, and that's what's running to this Immortal T. So that way you've got plenty of range, plenty of style. And if you haven't heard, there is a new Crossfire Nano TX coming out. It is called the Crossfire Nano Pro. It is the same form factor. You can run it in your quad and go like 500 milliwatts. It's insane. All right, now as far as our VTX, we are MMCX connector with an adapter that runs up and goes to SMA right here, okay? That VTX right here, look at this. This guy can do 200, 400, 600, and I think 800. So you are getting plenty of power to this guy. You've got your LED indicators lined up right here. With this closed up, you would just lean this back and take a look and be able to see. Let me demonstrate. Oh, I'm on channel three. See what I'm saying? So it's not a problemo. What ESC? Yes, yes, yes. This is the 45 amp Zeus V2. This is the big MOSFETs, great microprocessors. This is an awesome 20 by 20 mounting, but it's almost like a 30 by 30 form factor because the MOSFETs are so big. This is a wonderful ESC. And for our flight controller, the infamous F722 Mini Zeus flight controller. This is nothing but features packed into a tiny little board for an amazing price. Put this in almost any quadcopter, flash, beta flight 4.3, and it's gonna fly like a dream. I, I don't care who you are, all right? Now, we've also got our wires going up front to our Caddx Rattel V2. This thing is popping. Guys, this is awesome, all right? We're seeing a lot of quads coming out. They're not stopping. It doesn't matter, COVID or no COVID. This hobby is growing. We are pushing ingenuity. We are diving into the future, and companies like HDLRC are doing it. They are evolving. They are listening to us. They are taking our feet back and making these quads better. All right, pilots, so that is going to do it for the Sector X5. I hope that you're as excited as I am. I hope that you will stick around for the flight footage, and I hope that you enjoyed this video. I will see you on the next one.
Can I turn on my GoPro? It looks so, bro. 